It's a diva. DC Comics is a sinking ship if I ever saw one. Well, comic books in general. And much like a sinking ship, the once defiant rats that squeaked and squeed, eating their cheese while telling you not to buy their comics, are now fleeing. As always, when people are like, would you please get your politics out of my comic books? I'm like, what comic books are you reading? And if you don't like my politics, don't buy my book. I think it, I tend to be pretty optimistic, but in this one, I'm worried. I'm straight worried. Why? Um, because uh, stores are closing at a phenomenal rate. Uh, independent comic sales are down. Um, num mainstream comic sales are down, except for the very, like the top five, three or five books are up and everything in the mid list is way down. Numbers that used to be numbers that would get you canceled are now like, no, that's a hit. Help me! Somebody help me! How the mighty have fallen. But DC hasn't given up despite the fact that AT&T seems to want to sell them and Warner Brothers. And there's a strong shot that printed comics will become a thing of the past. I guess insulting your fan base and telling us we all suck and need to get with the times wasn't a good marketing strategy. Maybe, just maybe, wrangling in these snobbish asshats you call freelancers and telling them, hey, here's a crazy idea. Don't scare away the customers. Have you ever, could you imagine going to Wendy's or Burger King or something and buying a sandwich? And then going to get the sandwich, instead of getting the sandwich they want, they gave you something else. And the person working the drive-thru told you what an asshole you were while buying it. Would you ever go back again? And the answer is no. No. No other industry takes a hot steaming dump on its fan base like the comic book industry. It's actually surprising. Imagine going to buy a car and the dealer told you how instead of the car you want, we're going to give you this car and you're going to like it. And if you don't, you can get the hell out of here because you're a bigot. They wouldn't be in business no more. And it's happening now. But the move to make after burning every bridge with the comic book fan base is this. Woke. Pander, pander, pander. That's the move to make. Take offshoot characters and make them gay as hell, baby. Hot off the phenomenal release of the new gay Robin. Well, he's bisexual, but you know how they say in the gay community, honey. Yes. Everybody, we used to call that buy now, gay later. Oh, yeah. When you're like in 10th grade and you're like, I'm buying. We now have Superman's son, John Kent. Guess what? He's bisexual too, literally a month later. At this point, it's almost like a joke. You know? It's like, we already knew it was coming. Everybody who paid attention to comics knew this was coming as far back as August. And now it's here and it's still funny. But the most funny part is they made sure that this news dropped on coming out day. Yeah, that doesn't seem like marketing to me. This is really genuine. And it's not a gimmick. John Ken, who has inherited the mantle of Superman from his father, is now posting profiles on Grindr. Don't you feel good inside? I know I do, knowing that Superman's out there and he's a power bottom, Stacy. But all jokes aside, this has already been done. I mean, Tim Drake's Robin was a massive retcon or twice but you know bruce i check up on tim now and then he's a top level communications engineer married couple kids i guess all the attention and pr and backlash was enough for dc to go hey let's do that again people paid attention the only people who looked at this and saw this as a triumph also probably believed that after this election season america was going to go back to normal quotation marks buying into corporate tokenism is a sign of dementia I don't know how many times we have to jump through this hoop where companies pretend to care about anything, especially the LGBTQ community. But the second the properties hit overseas, they just yank out all that progressivism. I'm looking at you, Disney. Remember Star Wars? Star Wars' first gay kiss. And then it went overseas and they cut it out. It was like a throwaway scene. That's what they do. They have these like little throwaway scenes they can easily edit out for the markets overseas. Nothing says that they're really representing you than tickling your belly here and then disavowing your ass the second it goes to China or Iran. There was no gay kiss. What are you talking about, Abdul? Enjoy Star Wars. It's such a meme that Disney has had seven of their first openly gay characters so far. The key word first. And that there's seven of the first ones.
God, this map doesn't make sense, but it works if you're into marketing and PR. And it's even gotten to the point where mainstream media is making fun of the fact that Disney keeps having first openly gay characters over and over again. What happened to the first openly gay character a week ago? Oh, that's old news, honey. Because in all honesty, these people don't care about these properties. What they do care about is representation presented as panderization. And I know that's not a real word, but I just made it up. So if people can run around and go, yes, Queen Slay, I can come up with panderization. It sounds better. Do you remember the Batwoman TV show? Gay Batwoman, but that was always a thing. You know, the character was always gay, so I can't really turn my nose up at that. But then they kind of made Batwoman really obnoxious in the TV show with Ruby Rose. Then Ruby Rose saw it was a career killer and jumped ship. Then they made Batwoman an openly gay black woman because I guess gay women are all attractive and fighting crime in this universe, but whatever. Point being, remember how Twitter championed it and everybody said, this is progression, we're moving forward, change. What happened? Nobody's watching the show. The, what is it, the third or fourth season just came out and the ratings are lower than ever. It just keeps it getting lower and lower until it'll get canceled. Then it'll get canceled. We'll all dunk on it online and laugh about it. And then Twitter will pretend like, this was some sort of big travesty, but meanwhile, nobody watched. All the people who said they care don't care. For real, people on Twitter live for hype. It's on the same level as Call of Duty releases. And much like Call of Duty fans, they completely and utterly abandoned whatever they were cheering for literally five minutes ago when the next bit of hype representation drops. It goes from being an absolute triumph to completely and utterly forgotten. So basically, the first tweet that they put out, how many times did he tweet this on the coming out day? Two, three times? Like, for real? I've always said everyone needs heroes, and everyone deserves to see themselves and their heroes. Today, hashtag Superman, the strongest superhero on the planet, comes out as bisexual. Coming next for John Kent. Don't worry, whatever comes next, no one's going to care after this openly bisexual issue. Because that's how it rolls. The first issue comes out, he's bi, oh my god, progression, and then... Two or three months from now, the comic will be fledgling. Also, I find it weird how people today can't see themselves in any character or any person unless that person or character is exactly like them. It's like, oh, I can't relate to them unless they're the same skin tone as me, unless they have the same sexuality as I do, unless they use the same gender pronouns. Are they part of the LGBTQ? Like, what happened to people? That's why we can't connect anymore and everything's so fragmented. Everybody wants to see themselves specifically in their heroes. It's like, I need the hero to be just like me in every facet of my being or else I am not happy. We didn't want this to be DC Comics creates new queer Superman, Taylor said. We want this to be Superman finds himself, becomes Superman, and then comes out. And I think that really, that's really important. Like, you know why there's no new characters? Because nobody's creative anymore. All right, let's face it. If DC came out with a new gay character, people wouldn't give a shit. People wouldn't even care to really talk about it because we go, okay, well, at least they're coming out with a new character rather than taking an old character. Every piece of this is not only about false representation and tokenism. It's about getting people talking because frankly, the comic book industry is struggling. It's choking on its own blood right now. And instead of doing anything that would actually genuinely matter or be interesting to us, or I should say just be interesting because it's supposed to be entertainment. I don't need to be preached to. I don't need to be told what to do. I need to be entertained. Every day of my life, I hear about how f the world is. And I also hear about a multitude of minorities complaining all at once to the point of where I'm tired and I'm a minority. I'm getting at the point now where I look at people. I'm like, do you really want to bitch about this? Pull yourself up by your goddamn bootstraps. I can't believe I've become that person, but this new generation has forced me to. This is the first time ever they are seeing themselves in Superman, something they never thought possible. Those people, they don't really care about Superman. Genuinely. Let's be real. They don't care. I can see facets of myself in Superman. And it's not because I'm looking at him like Superman likes Boy. too. That's not why. You know, it's the facet of him doing what's right. Trying to lead by example. Those are the things that's about Superman that resonate with me. I don't need him to go. He slays and bangs seven gram rocks with Charlie Sheen to be more relatable. He is who he is. I don't need him to be like me to find inspiration. 
That's what's so sad about this generation. John Kent cares about the climate crisis and refugees. So Superman is now running around with a cardboard sign about climate change and refugees. When he could literally do something about it, he's fucking <laughs> Superman. <laughs> It'd be funny if it weren't so pathetic. No, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> No, Superman isn't going to go and take care of drug cartels so that Mexican people can live better in Mexico. He's going to do the... To, bro, oh my God, I think my brain is having a woke stroke. The guy who could change things would rather be like a Twitter poster. I'm done. I am done. He is as powerful as hope, faster than fate, and able to lift us all, and he's very... He's a very new hero finding his way, fighting things his father didn't as much. Taylor said, who wants this to be the new normal? Oh my God, Boing. Taylor, you suck. You literally in one foul swoop have made me not care about this new Superman. Because literally, he sounds like every ass on Twitter. The new Superman who could actually do something definitely about the refugee issues. Probably the climate crisis too. He could go to the polar Arctic. Like, for real, Superman could go there. And he could blow on the water and make more ice in the polar region. Like, bro, Superman could do something because that's how OP the character is. Instead, he'd rather protest. Superman could do something about refugees living in impoverished areas due to corrupt governments and drug cartels. He would rather protest with his gay boyfriend. And you wonder why manga is strangling you half to death. <laughs> Manga's doing so well, we don't understand. This is why. How do you sit there with a straight face and go, so Superman, John Kent is going to do what his father, Clark Kent, didn't do. He's going to protest. I've always tried to do our stories so that it didn't matter if you were of the white race, the black race, the brown race, or whatever. So social issues, I try to get in, in the background or underlaying a plot, but never to the point of letting it interfere with the story or hitting the reader over the head. You know, don't add real world politics into comics because we don't need it now. We've got social media. It isn't the 70s. It isn't the 60s. It ain't the 80s, even the 90s, where information wasn't readily available and everyone could see everything and find out everything. So getting, like, a, a different perspective from comics was good back then. Today, we are bombarded with it. At this point, we need entertainment to take us away from the misery that is Twitter and Facebook. Don't take Twitter and Facebook and put it into the damn comics, you fool! My God. Hire me as an editor, Marvel and DC, and I guarantee your sales will go up. I would save you from yourselves. Someone will come into the damn office with this, we're going to make Superman protest climate change. And I go, you see that window? If you don't leave right now, you're going the f*** out of it head first. You can't do that to me. I'm gender neutral. And I go, five, four, three. That's how it needed to be done. Things would be better. I would hire people with ideas and stories. I wouldn't hire someone that graduated college from gender studies sitting there telling me about the patriarchy guess what the patriarchy works buttercup if you really want a matriarchal society go take your ass to one there's a couple but guess what don't bother packing your phone because they don't have cell phone towers you asshole. jesus christ help me Stu. i wasn't supposed to break who's next the obvious question then which dc hero is going to be next one to get an offshoot queer version of themselves if the question is obvious, the answer is even more so. Wonder Woman, mark my words. Well, you know, uh, Wonder Woman already had a gay offshoot version in Superman Red Sun. Oh, forgive me. I... I come from an island of all women. Work it out for yourself. Ah, oh, right. It's been done. This video is sponsored by Ridge Wallet, making sure that me being on the internet is somewhat profitable. Now I have two bags of packaged tuna. These wallets can hold up to 12 cards. They come in 30 different stylistic colors. I'm showing you burnt titanium. 
in 18 karat gold because that's how large I'm living. I'm hood rich. These wallets have over 40,000 five-star ratings. Bulletproof, RFID blocking technology. You could take a chainsaw to it. I don't know why you would, but the option's there. If it ever really, you know, like if your wife left you and you decided she wasn't even getting your Ridge wallet. Oh, wait, no, it would survive the chainsaw. Forget that. Sorry. Go to RidgeWallet.com slash It's a Gundam and use their unique promo code It's a Gundam to save 10% off of your order on your next purchase. Free worldwide shipping and returns if you don't like the wallet. 